OK, uh, so hello, everyone. This is faster filtering with flux. OK, so here's what we want to do. Uh, we want to write a function that takes a vector of integers, and we want to print the even elements of that vector. So uh, we write the function. It's very simple. We commit this code to our repository. And it so happens that at our organization, we've got this really sophisticated AI-powered code analysis tool that measures how cool our source code is. OK? So it's, you know, sophisticated machine learning algorithms. And it looks at this code, and it goes, meh. Right, this is C++11. This is not very exciting. So we need to make our code cooler. How can we make our code cooler? Well, we can use ranges. OK, this is uh, C++20. It's all very nice. It's very cool. So we're taking our vector. We're piping it through a filter view. And then we're iterating over that filter view and printing out the uh, filtered elements. So the AI looks at this, and it says ranges. That's cool. So let's double check and make sure that the AI is right in this case. Uh, because I've heard they, they can make mistakes occasionally. Um, so let's, let's have a look at what's actually going on behind the scenes and make sure that the AI is right. OK, so this is the code we're interested in. And the first thing we can do is we can take our range for loop and we can translate it into a for loop using iterators. This is uh, not the precise translation, but it's sort of close enough, simplified version. And then we can further, we can transform our for loop into a while loop, like that. And now we need to look at what the filter view itself is actually doing. OK, so the first thing is in the call to standard begin on the view. What it's got to do is it's got to iterate over the underlying vector and find the first element that satisfies the predicate, that is the first even element. And again, when we call operator plus plus on our filter iterator, it's got to do the same thing. It's got to iterate through and find the next even element. OK, so this algorithm of looking through until you find an element that satisfies a predicate, that has a name. That's find if. So we can substitute in a couple of calls to find if. And then, again, we can look up the definition of find if. We can inline uh, the find if call, so we can do that in the first place and in the second call. And we end up with code that looks like this. And now we look at this and we go, well, hmm, I'm not so sure about this. This doesn't look quite as simple as what we started out with because we've got one loop to find the first even element. We've got another loop that we're actually interested in that you know, prints out the elements. And within that, we've got a nested third loop that at every stage we're calling to find uh, the next even element. So you know, maybe this is not quite so cool as we thought it was. OK, and actually, if we go to Compiler Explorer and we put in these uh, two implementations, we can see that uh, actually, you know, in this particular case, maybe ranges isn't doing so great um, because we're actually generating quite a lot more assembly uh, in the ranges case on the right-hand side. Okay, so what can we do about it? Well, we uh, came to this fantastic C++ conference in Toronto, and while we were here, we heard about this great new library uh, called Flux. <laughs> And we know that Flux allows us to uh, build up the same sort of pipelines that you can, do, uh, you can do with ranges. And so we hash include Flux. And right away, well, I mean, we haven't even written the function yet. Just right away, hash include Flux. And the AI says, oh, yeah. All right. So what does the pipeline look like with Flux? Uh, well, here it is. So what this says is that we're iterating over a reference to the vector. Then we're applying a filter. And we're retaining the even elements. And then we're writing all of those elements to the output stream, in this case, C out. OK, so now let's have a look. Let's do the same sort of transformation and see what Flux is doing behind the scenes. <laughs> I'm going to go over, sorry. OK, so the first thing Flux does is it takes the write to call and it translates it into a call to another algorithm called for each, and it passes it uh, this, the lambda that just prints the elements. OK, and now we're calling for each on the filter adapter. And in Flux, we have uh, this process called internal iteration. So for each has a special, so filter has a specialized version of for each that resolves to another call to for each on its parent sequence. OK, so it calls for each on the parent sequence and it passes it another lambda. Within this lambda, we've got an if statement that does the actual filtering. And inside of there, for elements that pass the filter, we just invoke the lambda that we were passed from the write to call. OK, so this inner lambda, um, it's, you know, it's all inlined. It's perfectly transparent to the compiler, so we can just inline that right away uh, as a print statement. And now we're calling for each on the vector. 
And Flux knows that the best way to uh, iterate over every element of the vector is to produce code that's equivalent to just a range for loop. And of course, we can inline the predicate as well. And we end up with uh, exactly what we started with. OK, so if you don't believe me, we can look at Compiler Explorer. So this time, we've got the uh, original code on the left, the Flux code on the right. And you can see that we've generated 100% bit for bit, identical code. The only thing that has changed, the only diff you can see right at the top is the function name. Everything else is the same. OK, so this is internal iteration. This is uh, one, of, uh, one of the Flux features. It allows us, in some cases, to generate uh, better code than equivalent ranges pipelines. It's very cool. There are lots of other things that Flux can do. Uh, so if you're interested in hearing more, uh, a couple of links there, or even better, uh, come to my talk 11 o'clock tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you.